Yes, yes. Because of the blood. Because of the blood. This day here is what the Old Testament was looking forward to, and we are living in it today. Oh, we can praise him all day long. I know I can. You know, I'm going to tell you something. When you got the word and the spirit, you got the combination that matches. You got the combination that makes you grow, that makes you just feel joyful because you know the cover, you know what God did in the beginning, and you know what God is going to do in the end. And we win in the end because we standing with Christ. Oh, when you go all the way through Revelation and you realize what God is doing and what's going to happen in the future and realizing that you're going to be with Jesus in that battle. And the battle ain't going to be long when all those that are defeated, all the enemy is going to be put to rest. And we're going to be able to dwell together with no more hate, no more crying, no more fighting. All oh, that's going to be abolished. So this is a time to rejoice in. And that's why I love him and I rejoice him so much because I feed on his word. Amen. 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 Gwen, you did a, just remarkable. When you think about what she's been through, she can still praise him. Still praise him regardless of what's going on. Because you know what? In my Bible, it tells us that we all going to have a reunion with our loved ones when Christ comes back and take us up. And that's what I look forward to. You know, my mama's been gone 20 years and she put this in me. She, she brought me and introduced me to the Lord. And them days when I moved out, she was still calling me. She would even, uh, when I come by, she had me a note with scriptures all over it. Encouraging scriptures. And it was a time I needed it. See, some of us, we're, 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 we're surviving off the prayers of our ancestors, the prayers of our mamas, daddies, and whoever. And we don't realize how much they've been praying for us. Even though we're out there, they're praying for us. So I believe that God will work great things out if we just trust him. Amen. So with that said, let us get into the word. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today with our eyes have seen, ears have heard. And Father, we thank you for salvation, that you've given us your son to die for us on Calvary, to give us a, a, a miraculous day in the future. So Father, right now, I ask that you would use me, move me out of the way, and I ask that you would feel me, speak through me, what you see fit for your people to hear. So I thank you, God, in advance, as we give you praise, honor, and glory, and ask it all in Jesus' name, and all the saints of God said, amen. Amen. I would like for you to go with me. I want to try to get quickly through this. Not much time. I just feel that I might have to do a part two on it, but I'm going to give you as much as I can in this. This is a great message from the Old Testament. Go with me over to Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, and I want to read verses 9 through 15. Exodus chapter 3. 3 verses 9 through 15. Give you a little time to get there. In your Bibles, electronic devices, or whatever you want to use. We're going to go to Exodus chapter, not, chapter 3, verse 9, beginning at verse 9. And it reads thus. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come upon me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my children, excuse me, my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, behold, 
when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. You may be seated. I just want to use simply as a title, No Excuses with God. No Excuses with God. Here in these passages of Scripture, we see that God is coming to Moses, giving Moses an assignment an assignment of going into Egypt to the Pharaoh. To tell the Pharaoh to let God's people go. To let God's people. You see, God had seen how cruel these Israelites were being towards his people and how he was treating them, how the Pharaoh was treating by the, being treated by these Egyptians. And God had seen enough. So God appointed Moses to go into the Pharaoh, go to the Pharaoh directly. God said, Moses, you're the man for the job. I'm appointing and I'm assigning you to go to the Pharaoh. So uh, God was sending uh, Moses to the Pharaoh to lead the people out of Egypt. So now Moses comes up with excuses to say that he's the wrong guy for this job. When we read the passages, Moses came up with various excuses to say he wasn't feeling it. So Moses answered God saying, but why me? Why me? Or as the scripture says, who am I? And sometimes we say that to God too. Who am I to do this impossible task? But God clearly says right here to tell them, that I am with you, or, or tells him that I am with you in this process. All we need to hear is God say, I am with you. When he gives us an assignment and says, I'm with you, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. We don't have to have anxieties. On that job you're on, you say, oh, no, I could never do that. But the thing is, is we're not trusting God. We're trusting ourselves. We're believing that we can, and it's true that we can't do it. We need God with us at all times to do it. But hearing these words, Moses is saying, what makes you think that I could go over there to this Pharaoh and just leave the children out of Egypt? What makes you think that, God? Moses just simply felt that he was not adequate enough to handle the task that God put him up to. So to begin here, I want to give you just a few points, and I won't be able to cover them all today, but just a few, and I'll probably pick up next week, but a few points. And the first point is, is there is no age or stage, and when God says go, there is no age or stage when God says go. When you look at Exodus 7 and 7, the scripture says, and Moses was four score years old. And Aaron, four score and three, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Moses was the younger brother. Aaron was the older. Now, four score is, each score is 20 years. So that means four score, he was 80 when he was asked to go do it. And most of us say, oh, I'm a little bit old. And we look at that today as being, oh, I'm a senior citizen. I'm the one at uh, uh, Norm's getting the senior citizen discounts. I'm the one at Denny saying, get me the senior citizen discount. I'm the one that's collecting retirement. Why are you one of these young folks? When God comes to us and say, you are the one. God puts no age or no stage or nothing, whether you know nothing or whether you know a lot, it's up to God who gives you the ability to do things. It's God's choice who he chooses. At the time he chooses, he empowers. It's not our strength 
It's not our understanding, but it's the power of God that gives us the ability to do something. See, now when we look at this here, they both were older, but God didn't look at that. See, we tend to use excuses all the time when God calls us to something. Well, it's not the right time. You know, it's not the right place. It must have been the wrong time. must have been the wrong place. Y'all know that song. Uh, how many know that song? It must have been the right time. must have been the right place. Now you're telling your age. Keep your hands down. But anyway, the thing is, is God chooses who he wants to. And I remember in my own testimony when I started preaching 20 years ago, I know I was awful. Nobody have to tell me that. I was awful. I was pitiful. As a matter of fact, my wife would come home and wouldn't say nothing to me. I'm just sitting there looking like I know I was awful. And she'd just walk in and just pat me on the back and walk away. And then sometimes she'd come back and give me an extra pat. And then she'd say to me, look around, you all right? I said, uh, I don't know. She said, let's go out to eat. And then pastor would say, bless you, man. And I say, Pastor, how'd I do? He drop his head and say, bless you, man. <laughs> and just walk off. But I knew I was awful, mainly because I was leaning to my own understanding. I wasn't trusting God. I wasn't letting God use me. I forgot the fact that God said, I am with you. I knew I was called, but I was still trying to do it in my own strength. And when we do it in our own, God will stand back and say, let's see how far you get with that. But when you step up and you say, God, I need you in every move that I make, God will be with you. He's not worried about what you don't have because God equips you with the things that you need at the right time. It's all about when God says do it. On that job, don't look at that posting that says the description of the job and what is required. You look past it and said, God, I know I could do all these things. I may not have them, but I know you could equip me to do them. And some of us have testimonies here today. Oh, you just don't know. Testimonies where we're in a position where we can say, I didn't know how I was going to do it. But man, I'm doing it mainly because of the power of God. Here's the fact, folks. The fact is, is like Moses said, Moses said, God, I, 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 I have a stammering issue. I, 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 can't, I, I, I can't do God said, listen, I will be with you. We don't need to give God excuses when he calls us to it. No excuses are needed when it comes to God calling you to do something. If you are a praying person, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you got the Holy Spirit in you, you've got to activate that power and let God do the rest. All you have to do is let God do the work that's necessary. It's not about us. It's about the kingdom of God and doing his work. We're in this world for not our purpose, but for God's purpose. And the thing is, is we've got to sometimes let go and let God. My own personal testimony, I wasn't letting go. I wasn't letting God. I said, God, each time I said, God, I'm going to run, he's remind me of what you did before. You remember when you ran away before? I, oh, okay, God, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. And then the Holy Spirit said, it's me. That still, quiet voice said, trust me. Talk to me. Pray to me. Let me do it. And sometimes we get in our own stubborn uh, uh, way of thinking and doing our own thing, and we don't realize God's word should be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our pathway. Let me tell you something. We can have all the word we got, we can have, but if we don't have the Holy Spirit and plugged into the power, the indwelling and the empowering, we do it all in vain. You got to have them both. And you got you to take time to communicate with God. This morning before I even got up here, I done prayed almost already four times. Once at home in my closet, and then in the pastor's study, and then again when I got up here, and then again when I stood before to present God's word. 
It's prayer that gives you the ability, and I'm constantly calling on God to help me, to help us through this, to help your people, to help us to come together. And God will give us what we need if we have the right attitude. Attitude is the altitude that gets you closer to doing the things of God, doing the things of God. Then my second point is this. My past regrets will hinder my future purpose. My past regrets will hinder my future purpose. We look at Exodus 2 and 12. God's word says this, and he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Now, this is where Moses killed that Egyptian. Some of us know the story. Moses killed the Egyptian for hitting some woman, and Moses, oh, you ain't going to get away with that. So Moses killed him and said, oh, goodness, I get him, and I'm going to bury this dude. Now, nobody knows. Uh, He knew when God came to him, and get this, get this. This was 40 years prior to God coming to Moses. God already knew what he did back then, but God still came to him. We believe in a God that knows all and is bigger than all, and he knows what we've done before. We can't let our past hinder our future purpose. The devil will keep reminding you of what you did back then, and you're not worthy of doing something for the Lord. God tells me, I'm throwing your past in a sea of forgetfulness if you just follow me and do what I told you to do. We see the same in Paul, what Paul did Paul was one that was slaughter Christians. Paul was haunted by this, but God said, hold on, man, my my grace has got you. My grace is sufficient for you. We have past, but we can't let it hinder our purpose for the future. We got to let that past go in order to do the things of God. We can stand up and worship him regardless of what's back there. If you say, God, forgive me, he forgives you immediately, right away. We can't let our past hinder. Moses was one that tried to use the excuse that God, I remember what I did 40 years ago. God don't remember that. God forgets all about it and was still able to use Moses. And I believe that God can use us in any way he chooses, and he chooses fit to do that. We just got to let it go, and we need to think about the things that God has for us. And everybody in here, there's a purpose on you, that God has you to do something, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's uh, 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 a sweep in the church, whether it's out there doing something in the field, whether it's talking to somebody. If we have ex-gang members here, and remember, ex-gang members here, then that means that you could reach the future and current gang members to turn their life around. God uses us for a purpose. Anything that we have done is forgetting. If I was a stupid drunkard, if I get cleaned up, God can fill me with the Holy Spirit, get me drunk with the Holy Spirit to fill some other folk. God changes. It's not about our past. It's about our future of where we're going. That's what God looks at. God don't play no favorites. God chooses everybody how he chooses to use them. Then there's my third point. Third point is this. It's not how much you know when God says go. It's not how much you know when God says go. Exodus 3.13, Moses says this. And Moses said unto God, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, who is Oh, excuse me. What is his name? What shall I say unto them? In other words, Moses is saying, hey, man, I don't know what to say. You know, I I don't even have a clue to tell what these people tell them what. You know, Moses was talking about, I don't have the answers or the information or the facts. I don't have nothing to tell these people who sent me here. I mean, you know, I don't get the, I don't get it, God. Why are you sending me? Why should we even listen to you? God, what if they say that to me? God simply told him, tell them that I am, that I am, sent you. 
And it's all, if you look at your Bible, if you got a Bible where it's all caps, I am that I am. That's all you need to say when somebody tells you, who do you think told you to do this? I am that I am told me. Rather than saying, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I got to think of it. Let me go back and pray about it. No, you've got to be bold about it and say, I am that I am who sent me. And we know that Jesus gave us a clear, clear understanding of, of what he was doing in the 28th chapter of Matthew. He says, I will be with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus clearly tells us, I will be with you always. And we tend to have that same mentality of going forward thinking that I don't have enough to go forward in this ministry. I don't be able to, I don't know enough. And lead a, to, to lead a small group or teach a Bible study. But God is going to give us what we need in the process of going through it. We're there to encourage one another. We're there to be able to build each other up. God will give it to you when you need it at the right time. It's not about how much you know. It's about who sent you. When God says go, we're not supposed to hesitate. We ought to go. Jesus came paid it all, and I'm going to stop it right here. There's more to it. But I'm going to tell you this. Jesus is the reason for this Old Testament because everything they looked forward to was in Christ. They talked about the coming Messiah throughout the Old Testament, and we have him today, which is Jesus Christ. And the power that you have within you is the power that Jesus said he will never leave you without. It's so simple. All it is is just confession and belief in the heart that Jesus is your Lord. That's the beginning state of it. Then studying his word, then fellowshipping with other believers, and then saying, God, here I am, send me. Whatever my need is, whatever you have for me, I'm not coming up with no excuses. I just want to do your will and be about your business, God. Help me, Lord, to be able to do what you've called me to do. I don't want to give you no excuse, God. When you say go, you tell me where to go, when to go, how to go, and every kind of go there is. It's just remember that God said go. And don't say no. Just go. Don't have no excuses, but just go where God tells you to go. There should be no no's or anything about it. Some of us act like we don't hear God. You ever had a wife or a husband, you're talking to them, and they don't want to hear you. They ignore you, play like they're gone deaf and everything else. And I see some folk talking because it must be, the, must be true because sometimes my wife will say something to me, and I'll act like I don't hear. I say, I don't understand. I get deaf. But when God tells us to go, don't act dumb. Don't try to act like you don't hear it. Don't have no excuses, but just go. Just go. You got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Just activate it. Plug it in if you're filled, or if, excuse me, if you're indwelt, then you can be in field to be able to use that power God has given you. So remember, no excuses with God. No excuses. God bless you. God keep you. God be with you always. No excuses with God. No excuses, amen? Let's give our pastor a hand for that wonderful message. No excuses. I'm asking we please stand. And there may be someone here today that has been giving God excuses why he should not accept God as the personal Savior. Today, no excuses. God says, stand the door and knock. But you have to let him in. Is there one today? Is there one? Let me just share something with you. God is a loving God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. But he will not force himself on you. He gives you a free will. He said, like Joshua said, choose this day who you will serve. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
So today you have a choice to make. Either you're going to accept God or you will not. There's no standing in the middle. Because by default, if you don't accept God, you're on Satan's side. Ain't no question about it. Is there one today? He said to compel men and women to come unto me. Not to force them. Compel. We serve a loving God. Is there one? And there may be one today that just out of a church home. They have accepted Christ. But they need to rejoin with another church, connect with a family, with fellowship. We extend the invitation to you today to join Century. Amen. We're a Bible-believing church. And we are seeking to grow in God every day. So we ask that if you are here today and you want to join Central, I ask that you come forward. Lastly, you've accepted Christ. You just want to be baptized. You just want to show the world that you have died to that old man and old woman. You have come up a new creature in Christ. We extend the invitation for you to be baptized. Is there one today? I'm going to ask that every head bow, every eyes closed. Wonderful message. No excuses. Dear God, we thank you, thank you for the message that went forward. We thank you for using our pastor, Pastor Jerry, dear God, for explaining to us, dear God, your word. We thank you for what you put on his heart, dear God. Dear God, if there is one today that was fearful to come forward for whatever reason, dear God, let them know there's no excuses. You say you'll be with us. You say you never leave us, nor forsake us. So, the God, I ask, the God, if, if they were thinking about coming and they were afraid, allow them to come in the near future, the God. But, the God, I pray, as always, that the message, as it go forward, the God, that it fell on good soil, the God, that it may grow into something beautiful that you can use, the God, and that they can share your word with those who are lost in this world. Compelling men and women to come unto you, baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. The God we know is not about us, it's all about you. Give us the strength, give us the wisdom to do the things you've called us to do. Let us not be fearful, because we know fear is not of you. Fear stifles us, dear God, to do your will, dear God. And we know with the Holy Spirit we can do all things. Let us not try to do it in our own strength, dear God, but the strength of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the message that went forward. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that has been leading and guiding us thus far. As we go further in this service, continue leading and guiding us. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone say amen. 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 amen.